This video is brought to you by Real Farm World, an agriculture simulation social network game. Grow and customize your farm at your own pace with greenery and decorative items you can place anywhere you want. Real Farm is a metaverse game serviced in Korea for 10 years. When you harvest crops, you can sell them, but what's interesting is that the price changes in real time depending on the sales volume of users. The game also has a strong realism aspect to it, teaching you how to really plant crops in real life using actual farming techniques, such as nutrients, moisture, and temperature, just to name a few. But what's really cool is that if you collect coupons while gaming, you can use the coupons to exchange them for real farm produce. Users who have signed up for the lottery have a chance to win a prize from the prize pool, which contains up to $5,000 worth of real products, fresh meat, vegetables, and fruit. So if you want to run your virtual farm and maybe one day start your own real farm, then click that link down below to pre-register today and receive real fresh products. Your future farm is waiting, partner. I've spent most of my YouTube career looking at various bootleg games throughout the world, and none are more famous, or infamous, than Mario Bootlegs. I mean, come on, Mario is arguably the most iconic video game character, apart from maybe Gooey. There exist more illegal bootleg Mario games than there are mainline games from Nintendo themselves. I'm not kidding. So I thought what better way to show them off than going through the complete list of bootleg Mario games that you could buy somewhere in the world. These games are terrible, head-scratching anomalies that when you look at them, all you can think is... Why? Now, I've already talked about a few of these games in past videos, but that was years ago, and I honestly hardly even remember the games. Plus, they're spread out through multiple different videos, so I'm making this one as a more cohesive and informative source. So with all of that being said, join me on this journey through the exhausting world of bootleg Mario games. Let's start this off with probably the most iconic game, a multi-cart, Mario 7 in 1. The creativity was absolutely flowing that day. Can we also just take a second to admire this cartridge? Because wow, just wow. The longer you look at this, the more painful it gets. I don't know about you, but I remember spending hours as a kid playing Super Mario 10. The first game listed is Mario 3. So we started up and, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, that does look, sound, and play exactly like Mario 3. That's not a bad start. I guess it's nice we didn't jump straight into the garbage. Good game, but I didn't need to tell you that. Okay, Mario 5. That's something you don't see every day. Am I experiencing like a Mandela effect? Because I definitely played this game before, many times actually, but I remember it being under a different name. Mario 2. Oh wait, what if we just... Ah, there we go! So yeah, for some strange reason, Mario 5 is literally just Mario Bros 2. The only difference I noticed was that the music sounded a little off. But maybe that's just me. Okay, Mario Missing! If you guessed that it was literally just Mario is missing on the NES, then you win a prize! Stay tuned until the end of the video to claim your prize. Mario 10. Now I know for a fact they don't go that high. Although somebody was definitely high when they made this. So Mario 10, Kung Fu Mari as it's legally referred to, has you taking control of a buff, big-headed Mario, Kung Fuing everything that stands in your path, including birds, straws, and tigers. I love that. Seeing Mario roundhouse kick a tiger like it's an ordinary Thursday afternoon is great. Instead of saving a princess though, we're spending all of our time with this old man. What, you wanna watch Jeopardy or something? The game itself isn't too bad, mainly because it's just a reskin of an actual NES game. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Yo, why did somebody decide Mario needed to be modded into the game? I have no earthly clue. And then I died by a little water snake. Sorry. Mario 11, or I'm sorry, Super Bros 11. Man, don't you hate it when you're hanging out with your new wife and- Oh Jesus, the aliens take her away. Well, I wonder what Peach is up to. Now, if you're an NES enthusiast, it won't take long for you to realize that, hey, this is just Adventure Island 3. 
And yup, that's all this is. Except now you're Mario. What's kind of funny though is that the protagonist of Adventure Island is a guy named Master Higgins who he sometimes does look like Mario. He's just a chubby guy with a red hat. You've probably seen hundreds of guys like this at the park. What's kind of nice though is that the game just sort of helps you, giving you 30 lives and all of the maxed out power-ups right at the beginning, making the game pretty easy, which for someone like me, aka bad, is always appreciative of. Mario 14. Mario with a stick. The game is another action side-scroller, but one I don't recognize. I actually thought it was an original game. The enemies have also been changed to Koopas and Spinies, and even the platforms and background look something straight out of Mario. But alas, it is not. This is another reskin of a game called Kaiketsu Yanchamaru 3 Taiketsu Zoringen. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's always saying, Oh, did you know Mario 2 was originally Doki Doki Panic? Yeah? Yeah? Well, did you know that Mario 14 was originally Kaiketsu Yanchumaru 3 Taiketsu Zoringen? I bet you didn't. Also, when you jump on a spring, Mario turns into Mr. Kaiketsu Yanchumaru 3 Taiketsu Zoringen. I honestly really like the game. Being a super obscure NES game, I think Mario 14 is actually more well known than the long Japanese name. I mean, look at this. You shoot fireballs, platform, and collect coins. Hell, now that I think about it, this game is actually more Mario than you think. It even has a few charming bits, like the title screen has the copyright made out to Wario. Like, he made this illegal bootleg game about his arch nemesis and is selling it for profit. It's amazing. And the final game in this bootleg cartridge is Mario 7. Now, this game has a very important history. One day, many millennia ago, a Swedish adventurer found this game and loaded it up. When he saw that title screen, he said, Ahem. GRANDAD! And the rest is history. Seven Granddad, to this day, is one of the most baffling things that the internet has ever witnessed. Like, what is this sprite of Mario? Well, believe it or not, Granddad is a reskin of another bootleg Mario sprite from a game called Dianshi Ma Li. It's some gambling game that uses this Mario sprite for some reason. The game itself, though, is just the Flintstones, which gave birth to another Granddad sprite, Caveman Mario. The game itself, though, is honestly not that good. It kinda sucks to be honest, I hate this game. The controls are ass, platforming is awkward, and Granddad has this dinky little swing that only hits the ground. And there's this stupid Prince of Persia hanging off the platforms bullshit and pulling yourself upwards nonsense. Luckily Granddad is so beloved though that there exist fan games of this bootleg that pretty much make it playable and fun. Man, thank god we're done with this cartridge. Let's hope we never see it again. Oh good lord, I already want to go back. So yeah, this is Kart Fighter. You don't usually get to do both, it's one or the other. What we have here is simply a fighting game. A very, very bad fighting game. There's surprisingly a lot of characters to choose from. Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Koopa, and who I can only assume is Princess Peach, but like, like they literally got everything about her wrong. Blonde hair? Nope, brunette. Pink dress? Nope, blue. You couldn't have been more wrong when making her. Also, Noko Noko? Oh wait, it's, it's Japanese for Koopa Troopa. The game is just... Not good. Being on the NES means there's only two buttons for attacking, which obviously limits your creativity and leads to nothing but button mashing. Although, I will give the game this. There are special moves you can do. Yeah, if you actually input button combinations, you can throw Hadoukens and whatnot. Honestly, I didn't expect this. Also, what's up with Bowser? Why is he so tiny? This guy is the one giving orders? This Koopa looks like he could knock Bowser on his back if he sneezed hard enough. Card Fighter is actually one of the more popular Mario bootlegs, having tons of reviews and active users on GameFAQs. For my taste though, it's just a little too slow and uninteresting. If you want a slightly better fighting game with Mario, I'd recommend World Heroes 2. It's not great by any means, but at least it has fat Mario. 
as well as Sonic, Goku, and Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles as playable characters. This roster is more stacked than Smash Bros. And while we're on the topic of fighting games that upset me, there's Mario Fighter 3, the, the, the Horold Harrier. You know, I guess W's just don't exist yet. And it's a Street Fighter D make on the NES with no Mario. Yeah, the game is called Mario Fighter and there's no Mario in sight. Not even Yellow Granddad apart from the title screen. Why would you lie to me? Okay, here's Mario 16, also known as Super Bros Jurassic Park. Now this cartridge, let me tell you, is something else. We got Mario riding what seems to be a half Yoshi, half Bowser monstrosity, with another Mario just chillin' like everything's fine. What we have here is a bootleg of Joe and Mac, another really fun side-scroller that I honestly didn't know had an NES counterpart. The Super Nintendo version is a great time. The NES one, however, could be better. Once again, the game unintentionally feels like a Mario game, with Mario throwing these hammers in an arc pattern similar to the Hammer Bros, and the Hammer Bros power-up in Super Mario Bros 3. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh. I did kind of enjoy the game, I guess? What's funny though, is that Mario 16 was released on the Dendi, which if you don't know, was a Russian rip-off console that was literally just an NES. Th the nerve of them to take an NES and throw a Dendi sticker on it. That's essentially what they did. Anyway, along with the Dendi console came a Dendi TV show where some host would review bootleg games as if they were the originals. And on one of the shows, the host reviewed Mario 16 saying that it was such a good original game that Nintendo then ripped it off and created Joe and Mac. I'm dumbfounded. Th this guy thought that Mario 16 was original and Nintendo ripped them off. This Dendi TV show is so insane, but I'll have to save that for another video in the future. For now though, let's move on. To Pizza Pop Mario. Or according to this cartridge, it's Mary's Pizza Pop. With the long lost third Mario brother who's looking a little too enthusiastic in whatever he's doing. In this game we follow Mario, now working as a pizza delivery boy. Out of all of his jobs, this is somehow the least weird. One day he comes across a really expensive ring he'd like to give to his girlfriend. See? I'm glad he moved on from his island wife who was abducted by aliens. So in order to get this expensive ring, Mario will now... work. That's it. He just delivers pizzas and will try to save his money so he can one day afford it and give it to his girlfriend. Although Mario seems to be delivering in a pretty tough neighborhood, considering all the stray cats want him dead. Yeah, for some reason we're only fighting angry cats, which is kinda mean. I don't know, this hula hooping girl looks a little suspicious, maybe she needs to get whapped with pizza. Also Mario, what are you doing? You're gonna ruin the pizza and get no tip! How do you expect to buy the ring then? The game is alright, if not a little difficult. The hit detection is weird, considering it's a lot like Granddad, where you're for some reason just swinging at the ground. Also, hey, Mario ascending this area while having barrels thrown at him. Seems kind of familiar. It's weird how so many of these bootlegs have even just, just one small reference to Mario. Like, did these people play these games and say, oh, that's kind of like Mario, and then actually create a bootleg? I wouldn't be surprised. Hero Mally Brothers, featuring Ryu and Jack, of course. The beloved Ryu Mally and Jack Mally. In this game, China Land is under attack by Undyne. If you know, you know. And it's our job to find the seven bells to stop it. Literally just the seven Dragon Balls. I mean, this asshole even looks like he's straight out of Dragon Ball. The game is a top-down RPG, making this the true first ever Mario RPG. I honestly really love how combat works in this game. On the overworld, you'll have a random encounter. When you get into battle, however, it now turns into a top-down action game similar to Zelda. But you can actually jump and platform. 
It's a little funky to get used to at first, but when you do, it's loads of fun. Action RPGs were virtually non-existent back in these days, so seeing something this progressive in a bootleg Mario game really flabbergasted me. Apart from that though, it's just a really solid RPG. For at least the 20 minutes or so I played of it. I mean, I wasn't going to invest hours into a story-heavy and exploration-heavy RPG. If you want to check out the original game this was ripped from, I believe it was called Little Ninja Brothers. But, I don't know. This is the first time I'd actually recommend you check out the bootleg over the original, just for the familiarity of playing as Mario. The game is also two players, so if you want to bring along a friend, you can both suffer together. Because hey, at the end of the day, that's what friendship is all about. Next game on the docket is Super Mario Sonic with a K2. And no, there isn't a first one, blame the Chinese. The game is ripped from Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I know this because after selecting my character, the game essentially restarts itself and shows the original title screen. A lot of these games' quality will honestly lie in how good its source material is. And Rescue Rangers is luckily a really fun game. So, hmm, alright, what's the Mario connection here? Uh, well... You attack enemies by picking boxes off the floor and chucking them at whoever's in your way. Kinda like Mario 2. So perfect, makes sense why they made this. The Mario sprite honestly looks really good, for whatever that's worth. He's not glitching out or looking grossly out of place. The same can't be said for Sonic though, Jesus buddy, what did they do to you? I hope whoever made this game is happy. Just in general. I mean, you gotta be down bad to make this game in the first place, so I hope you're in a better place. This is 1990 Super Mario 4, where we can play as either Super Mario 4 or Luigi. Yeah, fuck you Luigi, you don't get a Roman numeral. Ah, now you see this game does something very unique, in that it's literally Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels! Or the true Mario 2 if you live in Japan. The only difference, and I mean the only singular difference in this game, is that the blocks now have a 4 on them. And the cloud has a smiley face. Oh, okay, my bad. Totally the best game ever now. What's funny to mention, though, is that in an issue of Club Nintendo Mexico, which was an official Nintendo magazine, may I remind you, a reader asked if they really saw Super Mario Bros. 4 at a video game store. With a description very similar to 1990 Super Bros. 4, he said, and I quote, Is it true that Super Mario Bros. 4 has already come out on the NES? I asked because I was offered a cartridge. I saw it, and it has very similar graphics to Super Mario Bros. 1, but with different scenes, and I suppose that after the incredible graphics of Mario Bros. 3, they would not repeat those of Super Mario Bros. 1. The other thing is that I played it on the American Nintendo, NES. So wow, even back in the 90s these bootlegs were running wild. Yeah, I'm sure Nintendo also probably kidnapped that child and made him disappear so as to not spread awareness of these bootlegs. Super Bros 6. That's it, thanks for coming. Alright, this game is a bootleg of Tiny Toons Adventures, but what's kind of fun to note is that Tiny Toon Adventures was an obvious ripoff of Super Mario Bros 3. I mean, just look at everything in front of you. The stages have a similar layout and art direction, there's carrots, or coins floating around, slopes you could slide down, and this HUD down here looks almost identical to the one found in Mario 3. Apart from all of that though, the game is... Uh, mid? It just makes me wish I was playing Mario Bros 3 instead. I guess let's just move on. Super Bros 8. So in this game, there's a princess or there's something, I don't know, I can't read this. Here, Mario has a hammer. Again, a very Mario thing to do. Going around smashing evil mushrooms and shit. It's a real good time, honestly. So many of these games, I'm just starting to associate with their bootleg counterparts. Like, if I ever see Don Doko Don 2, I'm gonna start saying, Oh man, are we playing Super Bros 8? The game kind of feels like Mario from a gameplay perspective. Something about the way Mario jumps and keeps his momentum feels really familiar. 
Also, we got falling logs, like in Mario Bros. 2. I swear, all of these bootlegs keep having some minor connection to Mario. All in all, definitely one of the better bootleg games we've checked out. That is until I saw this squirmy little fella and felt like I needed a shower. Okay, this next game won't take long to talk about. Mario Boss 2. We see Mario with yet another different girl. He can't keep getting away with it. Who also gets kidnapped and he's gotta save her. You know, same shit, different toilet. You're running around some neighborhood once again with a hammer beating up thugs. The only problem with this game is that it's so damn difficult. I honestly couldn't beat the first level. I tried my hardest, but obstacles just keep coming at you out of nowhere and you don't have any time to react. So yeah, sorry Mario Boss 2. I'm sure you had so much more depth I wish I could have explored. All right, this is Super Mario's sister. Can I ask you something? How do you feel when you see this box art? I hope furious. So what we have here is Super Mario Bros. 3, but now with girls, Maria and Louise. I, I actually don't know, I just made that up. Once again, the game is fairly unchanged for the most part. The coins are now heart-shaped, and when Maria becomes a furry, I now feel more ashamed of myself. Although when you play the bonus minigame and see the character's full body, you'll see that it's just some girl's head plastered on Mario's body. So I guess if you really want to play Mario 3 as a female counterpart, then here you go. Now hold up, something seems fishy about this. I know Super Mario World. I love Super Mario World. But this... I don't think this is the Super Mario world I grew up with. Well, it kind of is. Super Mario World on the NES is a bootleg Mario World remake on the NES. Now I gotta be honest, this game is so fucking horrible. I mean, Jesus, how do you mess something up this bad? Mario existed on the NES. It's not like you don't have any source material to go off of. Mario moves incredibly slow when walking. You would get bored in seconds if you played it like this. But, when you hold down the run button, Mario moves like Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's damn near impossible to see what's going on. The stage layouts are also slightly different. I don't know why. Level 1 doesn't have any bonsai bills, but instead fireballs. There's also random pits thrown where there shouldn't be. I was zooming through level 2. I mean, I've literally played this level so much when I was a kid, I could practically do it blindfolded. But right at the end, there was this massive goddamn hole you can't see coming, and I die. Like, what the hell was the point of that? The game is definitely interesting for curiosity's sake. You can just pick whatever level you want to at the start, which is nice. It's like the game knows it's total bullshit and won't force you to actually try and beat the stages. Which I couldn't do, and honestly, wouldn't want to. Wario Land 2. I guess this is kinda cheating since it's not exactly Mario, but whatever, I've been playing so many of these bootleg games, life just ain't fair like that. The game is just Kirby's Adventure, but with Wario. I guess it makes sense to use Wario instead of Mario. Wario is a fat old tubby creature that'll eat anything in sight and use his bulbous body to fly around. I also appreciate how they made Wario pink. Like, wow, I'm really immersed now. Uh, that's all I really have to say. I, I honestly don't know why this game needed to be made in the first place. Now that is a title screen! Who cropped this? Who needs to be fired? So what we have here is a hack of a game called Top Rider. A racing game with motorcycles. No carts. You had one specific job. The only thing that makes this game Mario themed is the fact that all the racers just have the Mario characters' heads just plastered on these bodies. It's kinda silly seeing Bowser's dragon head on a human body. Apart from that though, the game is honestly just... fine if not a little boring. The original game required some blow-up motorcycle accessory to play. It looks super silly, but Super Mario Kart Rider changes up the controls, so now you can only play with a regular controller, taking away 95% of the game's original charm. Fantastic. Good 
morning, Mr. Somari. I don't think you're supposed to be here. So, Somari. A Sonic the Hedgehog demake for the NES starring Mario. This is what happens when a time traveler moves a salt shaker in the past. I'll give it this. It seems to be built from the ground up with its assets and physics. Which is also what makes the game terrible. I mean, look at this. I got hit and fell through the floor. Like, how does that even happen? Enemies are always respawning in the same places whenever they appear on the screen, giving you zero time to react and almost always getting hit. The game's also just such a massive eyesore. Everything from the glitching, the clutter of items and enemies, and poor color choices. It just looks and plays like a mess. Mario's speed is nowhere near that of Sonic's. So when you get ahead of steam and start moving, and this is as fast as Mario goes, it's pretty unsatisfying to say the least. Sorry, Mario. Or so Mari. Maybe we should just leave this to Monic. Oh, damn it! Mario 3 Bokpir Sibeta, which roughly translates to Mario 3 Around the World. That's not what that says, Russian is a made-up language. So, yeah! Mario on the Sega Genesis, so what could possibly go wrong? Oh, okay, everything, I never thought of it like that. This has gotta be one of the worst Mario games to ever exist. Strictly from a gameplay perspective. The game has no physics. Every time you make a jump, you never know if it's going to be enough to make it. You can hold down the jump button, run, and get some momentum, it doesn't matter. You are simply praying to whomever you believe in every time you press a button. And look at this shit! I died when I respawned! I was beneath the ground! I had to mash the button repeatedly before these Goombas got to me. But it doesn't even matter because when I jump out, I lunge towards them. This game is just so frustratingly broken. You think you can play it, but just jump around for a few seconds and you'll quickly realize that the physics are practically randomized. And you don't even want to know what I saw when I got a game over. You sure? Okay. What in the fuck is this? It looks like an angry plant with two PD piranhas for hands. And they goddamn ate Mario! Apart from his hat, I guess, which was nice. God, I wish that were me right now. Believe it or not, the game actually had a sequel of sorts. Mario 4 A Space Odyssey. It is the same, and I do mean the same exact game as Mario 3. Same bullshit problems, same garbage gameplay, and same terrible music. No! I simply refuse to keep playing. Forget trying to beat the first level. I couldn't get past the first few steps without this broken ass game screwing me over. This game also has a horrifying game over screen, where a blooper sits on Mario's face, that's inappropriate, and a piranha plant just bursts out of his chest. Is that a reference to Alien and the Chest Bursters? Because this game is Mario for a space odyssey? It really makes you think. It makes you think who gives a shit. Moving on. Alright, I'm calling this one Russian Super Mario World. It is... very much not Super Mario World. The assets are taken straight out of Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo, and the gameplay is very reminiscent of that Chippendale Rescue Rangers game of all things. Mario also shoots Hadouken sometimes, it's pretty badass if I'm being real. I'll give it this, the game is at least playable. Yeah, I actually managed to beat a few levels pretty easily and somewhat had a fun time doing it. I even made it to a boss, this giant ass Bowser who yes, you need to hit with boxes. He was hard as hell though. Or I wasn't really trying, because at this point I've been playing Mario bootlegs for an hour and a half straight. I would recommend this game surprisingly. If you're ever at a Russian flea market and come across it, pay the 200 rubles or whatever. I don't know, is that racist? I'm sorry. It's me, Mario! Super Mario World 64 on the Sega Genesis. I don't think you Russians know what the 64 stands for. But oh damn, wait! Visually, this game looks exactly like Mario World! Maybe we're in for a treat! Oh, 
Never mind, I should shut up more. What the hell is this? Why does the game sound like this? Oh, but the sound effects are the least of our worries. Once again, the poor physics and overall sluggishness of the game is really frustrating to play. Enemies speed up and slow down depending on how good the game decides to process itself. Meaning sometimes enemies will move really slow, but then when you get close to them, they speed up and hit you. I just... I give up on this. I refuse to play more, otherwise I'm gonna lose my marbles! So let's end this video by checking out a quadrilogy of games. Is that... is that right? It's four games in a series. The Superboy series. Superboy 1 was released on the NES. And it's goddamn just Super Mario Bros. 1. The colors are weird as hell though. It looks like one of those many ports of Super Mario Bros. that was released on an obscure PC console. Like the ZX Spectrum or whatever, I don't know. It just looks like shit. Apart from that though, it's literally just Mario 1. Sound, gameplay, and all. Thanks for coming. Which leads us to Superboy 2! How in the absolute holy mother of fuck did the sequel get worse? The most glaring issue with this game you'll notice right off the bat is the screen tearing. Like every time you move to the right and the game tries to follow you, it's just stuttering and struggling to keep up. It makes me want to vomit. The game looks like horseshit, but it's acting like it's trying to process the most cutting edge graphics because the gameplay is so slow. It once again feels like an underwater stage or something. Like damn bitch, drink some Gatorade or something, whatever helps you not struggle so hard. Maybe it's because the game was released on the Sega Master System and nobody ever played that console ever. So who knows, that thing could probably be weaker than a toaster. Avoid this game. Oh my god, I'm sorry about what I said, please don't hurt me. I, I love Superboy. Man, this is some fucked up looking title screen. Who wants to play video games after seeing this? Once again, the game looks and plays like Dookie. And what's this music? This is not Mario music. Level 1 is literally just a one-to-one -one copy of the first Super Mario World stage. But after that, the game becomes original. Originally terrible? These stages are so empty and boring! It's like they were designed by a four-year-old. Hell, that's not even really fair, because at least a four-year-old might be chaotic and throw some stuff in here. These stages are literally... nothing. One of the bosses was a hammer bro that he just moved in one direction and never turned around. Well, hopefully the fourth and final Superboy entry can save its reputation. Superboy 4 stars some random kid, no longer using Mario. Although, I don't know why, because everything else is still ripped straight from Mario. I guess the game controls and feels better than the others, but that's a really low bar. Because don't get confused, the game is still cheap garbage. It does that bullshit where when you jump on an enemy, they just fall down through the screen. No death animation or nothing, just boop, you're dead. Visually, yes, the game is a massive step up from all the others. It actually looks like a game, and sort of plays like one too. So congrats! After three failed attempts, you kinda have a game now. What a happy ending. Superboy, you deserve the girl! I hope you're happy with... Oh, hell no! Get this out of my illegal bootleg ripoff! And you know what? That's where I need to draw the line. That was the very, very exhausting world of bootleg Mario games. So many games that just have you questioning, why? Who would go through the effort of making all of these pointless games so the guy at the Chinese flea market could have some inventory? I honestly don't know. There's definitely more bootleg games out there, but I mainly wanted to focus on the ones that had physical releases and could be found out in the wild. Games that were actually sold to the poor, unsuspecting grandmas of the world. I hope at least you learned something today. It was kind of fun revisiting a lot of these games and bootlegs from my past. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I know Sonic the Hedgehog has a lot of bootleg games as well.
Oh god. Well, until then, I'm gonna try and regain some of my sanity. Thank you so much for to watching my video. You get that reference? I goddamn hope so.